Check out my website at karmacut.com to see system specs, donation links, and latest uploads all in one place. You can also get cool rewards like Karma Cut patches and key tags on my Patreon. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell button for future uploads. Hello everyone, so today's video is obviously going to be about Vanguard Normandy 1944. It's a new hardcore tactical FPS that's on Kickstarter right now. And we've seen games like Hell Let Loose, uh, they went through Kickstarter as well, and they actually successfully funded their project. Uh, Vanguard Normandy is only looking for 13,000 US, so it's a relatively low goal, and I think this game's got a lot of cool things going for it that isn't, you know, close to Squad, Postscriptum, or uh, Hell Let Loose. So we're gonna go and watch the uh, announcement video, and I'm gonna give you my reaction, and then we'll dive further into their Kickstarter page. But I'll leave the links, the videos, and the Kickstarter page in the description down below if you want to see it for yourself. But yeah, we're just gonna hop right in here, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll react to this video, essentially. Vanguard Normandy 1944 is a multiplayer World War II first-person shooter with a heavy focus on teamwork and tactical infantry combat. So first off, the first thing you might notice, especially with that intro clip that I played for you guys, that's their uh, that was their announcement trailer. Um, it's a different engine. It's not on Unreal Engine 4. It's on CryEngine, which is really surprising because uh, all these games that have been coming out recently, even Insurgency Sandstorm, like they're all on Unreal Engine 4. So just having a different art style and a different engine adds a whole different layer as far as graphically and sets this game apart from, you know, Postscriptum Squad and Insurgency Sandstorm um, just because of how different the engine is and how different things look. It's a nice brush of, brush of fresh air to play something on a different engine. I'll tell you right now because I'm so tired of playing stuff on Unreal Engine 4. The events of D-Day take and hold crucial objectives with your squad as part of the Elite Sick Airborne or hold the line as the fierce German Wehrmacht over these carefully recreated battlefields. So first off, again, not first off, excuse me, but it's going to be very much like Postscriptum in where it's focused on the British and the Germans, not really Americans, at least not yet. Maybe they'll get to it eventually, but it's focused on smaller unit con uh, combat. So uh, squad versus squad or squad to squad versus squad. It's not massive, you know, 40 v 40 matches. They're focusing on small unit uh, combat. And you can see in the graphics, like it just looks so beautiful. I've always been a fan of uh, the CryEngine just because of how beautiful it is. From the but yeah, I, it's, it looks really clean, uh, even this pre-alpha footage. Lead the way by suppressing the of course, this video is going to look a little grainy because I'm recording the video, but the you can go and watch the video for yourself. tactics to win the fight. With its real-world locations and painstakingly recreated weapons, equipment, and uniforms, all rendered in the stunning CryEngine, Vanguard challenges players to fight and secure historic objectives. So right there, and as we go through this video, I want you to notice the suppression effects, because everyone knows I'm a huge fan of suppression effects. There's no way to accurately recreate uh, the, the the fear of suppression and the fear of getting shot at, uh, you know, through a video game. Like, immersion can kind of do that, but I'm a strong believer in that suppression needs to be added um, superficially on top of your character, just because it's it's incredibly difficult and near impossible to recreate that same kind of fear of death in a video game. So adding these kind of effects really increases the effect of suppression and allows for more tactical and more um, different strategies to be used instead of just a straight up shooter. Uh, positioning matters more, decisions matter more. So I am a fan of suppression. I know a lot of you aren't and, and you guys aren't a fan of the, uh, the visual effects and stuff like that. But personally, I feel like beyond the, the visual damage or not damage but the visual disruption it causes it causes difference in gameplay from decisions and positioning during the most intense battle of and tactics obviously modern history d-day we wanted to create a squad based fps that is fun but poses the real threat that a single bullet can end your life so as you can see, they're really, really focusing on the hardcore aspect of this game. Like they keep hitting on they want a hardcore, you know, shooter that's and that's representative by the suppression and the levels of their suppression effect in this video. Our main game mode, Raid, immerses players into the intensity of infantry. So we're going to pause right here because uh, they're bringing on a custom game mode. Hopefully, everyone knows that I've been complaining about the game modes in Postscriptum and in Squad for the la and in Insurgency Sandstorm for the past like month or two um these attack and hold kind of objectives and and these these game modes are just so stale so bland they've been played over and over and over again and it's so important that games come up with their 
own custom fun game modes, whether they be, you know, territory control or some version of it or, you know, unique game modes. Because right now, the only game that really has a unique game mode, in my opinion, is Hell at Loose. Like, that's why I loved Hell at Loose, because as many as much uh, assets and as beautiful as Postscriptum was, the gameplay and the game modes are just bland. Whereas Hell at Loose was such a brush. <laughs> breath of fresh air i don't know why i can't say that phrase uh, properly but i'm just so excited for new game modes <laughs> like i'm so tired of the take and hold game mode that is in squad and postscriptum and uh you know pr and everything like that like insurgency is a great game mode i love insurgency in within squad and then insurgency sandstorm like their game modes are also a little outdated so i'm hoping that we get new game modes with all these new shooters because honestly like game modes are the majority of the game like if you have a game with great assets but bland game modes the game is not going to be fun or on the flip side a game with great game modes uh will be fun regardless of how many assets you have in it the assets just add to the game mode so i think uh, a lot of these studios and a lot of these companies need to focus more on the actual gameplay and the actual game modes more than just throwing beautiful assets into the game right because if the gameplay doesn't hold and it's bland, it's going to be bland no matter how much uh, you put into it. And that's part of my gripe with Postscriptum, and we can go into that in a whole other video. But I'm glad to see that they're introducing a new uh, game mode. One thing I want to talk about here is the UI. So as you can see here, it's kind of like uh, Squad's UI, just a little bit. Um, you have the squad selections here, so I'm thinking it's going to be more than one squad. So maybe two squads per team, because uh, I know they want to focus on the smaller unit side of things, not the massive uh, 40 v 40 So this is going to be more focused on uh, small unit leadership and stuff like that. But you can make multiple squads, so it's definitely going to be, I think, around 10 to 20 per team, hopefully. Um, and then, as you can see here, uh, you can pick the kits that you want. All right, so you got the MG, Grenadier, Stormtrooper, and then the squad leader so i don't know what the assets are going to be uh specifically as far as weapons and equipment but you can see the layout's kind of like squad it's got that kind of organization so it's gonna have that leadership and that hierarchy as well as kit selection every combat where every single life matters hold the line with your squad by taking up ambush positions and fighting off the attackers or assault the objective by advancing as a team suppressing the enemy and wiping out all of the defenders Players should stick together as a well-disciplined squad, which will be the crucial factor in this small-scale, individual squad-based mode. Raid provides an intense and frantic experience that requires teamwork and tactics to be successful. So all these buzzwords, all these hype words, right? These are really getting me excited, right? But they're, they're in the end, they're really just hype words and buzzwords, right? Hardcore, tactical, small unit, you know, they're, they're, they're the they're survival zombie kind of like buzzwords, open world of, uh, of tactical shooters. So, I mean, it doesn't really mean much. It's good to, you know, notice that they are focusing on those keywords. But until I see like gameplay and actual functional mechanics that that emphasizes and and keep the squad together because postscriptum says it's a hardcore tactical shooter that that focuses on the organization and teamwork but that game falls apart so easily just because of how there is no real communication or tactics incentivized in that game it's just it, it i don't know i have a whole bunch of issues with postscriptum but if they can make mechanics within Vanguard that actually encourage teamwork and encourage that communication, encourage, um, you know, actual tactics being used in combat and not just point, click, shoot, uh, I'm going to be extremely happy. And especially on the smaller side of things, like because they're not opening it up 40 v 40 and because they're focusing on the smaller side of things, hopefully they can really flush out these mechanics because they don't have to worry about the macro side of the game. They can focus on micro mechanics that encourage teamwork and encourage tactics. We wanted to deliver a hardcore tactical combat experience. Right, so there are those buzzwords again, but until I see actual mechanics, they're just buzzwords. That allows players to get immersed in the setting with a back to basics, gun on gun approach to gameplay. There isn't class creation here or any expansive progression systems. You can see, like I said before, you can notice that suppression. I real, I'm a fan of it. I know some of you, it's it's gonna be hated or love it, right? Same thing with Hell Let Loose. But you gotta remember, it's not just like the graphical effect that the suppression has. It has a very large gameplay effect. It really changes how shooters are played when you actually have uh, a way to effectively decrease the enemy's fire. Like positioning, flanking, and maneuvering actually works uh, when there's actual suppression effects because players don't die as fast and allows for further thinking and tactics to be played out. So I'm really, really hoping that they find that good balance of suppression, right? Because you don't want to be it to be completely overwhelming and completely just off the wall, just, you know, overdone and to where it's like it's unrealistic and it just makes you want to puke. You want to make sure that it's just enough so that it changes gameplay, but not too much that it, you know, gives you a headache. 
We're instead focusing on the interplay between squads and the tactical decisions chosen in each historical scenario. We all have a passionate interest in the historical events of the Second World War, and we believe it's important to keep these events of the past in the memory of all. Gaming provides a powerful and interactive way of doing so. We've been inspired by the gritty, historical nature of Red Orchestra, the hardcore gunplay of Insurgency, and intimate, squad-based teamwork of old-school Rainbow Six games in creating this historical and tactical mode. Raid has been designed to put the player in the boots of an infantry soldier who values their own life. To allow- I like all these buzzwords. I like it. I like the direction that they're setting with the language that they're using. But- that's so easy to do. I need to play it. I need to see how they're doing that, right? Because it's very easy to say, oh, we're making it really immersive. We're making it so that every player cares about their life. The squad says that all the time. Or not all the time, but like that's kind of like what people think of squad. And then once you start playing squad, people are giving up. People just die. Like it's, it's, they need mechanics that enforce this. So I can't wait to see what mechanics they're actually planning. All players to instantly experience a slice of intense infantry combat in a real historic setting without having to run around a large map trying to find the action. I love that. I love that part. <laughs> because they're focusing on the small unit stuff, you're essentially going to get a hopped up, uh, more adrenaline filled, tactics filled, hopefully, version of squad and postscriptum, right? Because po squad and postscriptum, they're on the larger th side of things. You get that whole team mechanic where it's 40 v 40, you got logistics, you got tanks, you got all this stuff. But if Vanguard pulls it off right, they're gonna fill like this mini niche area within the tactical shooter where it's like really hardcore, kind of like Insurgency Sandstorm. But Insurgency Sandstorm, I would say, is even further uh, towards the arcade shooter side. Like it's a lot faster paced and it's not too much teamwork involved. There's a little bit of teamwork but if they can really nail the small unit tactical gameplay like and pace it properly and get like the map sizes the proper size you're gonna end up having a a great game because it, it'll take the best things of insurgency and the best things of squad and postscriptum and push them together of course you're losing certain things like uh speed of gameplay with the insurgency hopefully it's slower than insurgency and the scale of gameplay with postscriptum and squad right you won't have those vehicles and those those large maps and those large assets and base building but you'll have this like cool game where you have a really intense adrenaline filled uh shooter that's that's tactical and that's like i'm craving that so much right now Every member of the Vanguard development team joined because of the desire to play a historically accurate, tactical, team-based multiplayer game that is accessible and fun to play. <laughs> These are all buzzwords. I, I, I like, it's getting me hyped, but like, they're all buzzwords. They, and they've done this multiple times in this video. Like, I, I can get down with it. I'm so down with this direction. Historically accurate, good, right? Everyone wants that, especially the way Battlefield's just fucking around. Everyone wants historically accurate. Team-based, yes, please. There's too many shooters that don't require you to even use your microphone. Multiplayer is a given. Tactical, that's within the niche. That's the larger genre of the game. I can't wait for more tactical games. I feel like there's not enough that's coming out right now that's finished, right? We have a whole bunch of early access half-baked games, right? We got Escape from Tarkov. Uh, Sandstorm's the, probably the furthest game that feels complete. Uh, Squad is still leaps and bounds out from what it plans to have at, uh, at, at release. So 100 players helicopters tanks that's still not all in yet postscript them i don't even that's a whole nother video um hell at loose is still doing their thing and developing in the dark accessible is good right we need games where it's like easy plug and play this is where arma fails right because arma 3 isn't really accessible you have to get a community you have to get the mods it's just a headache and then fun right everyone wants a fun video game so yes i <laughs> believe those features can coexist I believe! I want to believe, Vanguard! I want to believe with you! on the project in its current form since 2015, developing this game solely in our free time. We are dedicated to the project and have invested ourselves into its development. We've come a long way over the years and the project has become ingrained into many of our lives and the people who surround us. Much like our close-knit development style, we set out to embed that mentality into our game to create an enjoyable experience that requires teamwork and communication. Yes. Your Kickstarter support will allow us to release on Steam Early Access. The unavoidable launch costs will make up the basis of our funding goal, and your backing will cover these costs, including launch servers, middleware, and anti-cheat support. 
It might be tempting to promise the earth with ambitious funding goals, but we want to be open and honest with the community and our backers. We've been doing a lot with a little for a long time, and this won't change. What will change, however, is the speed of development and how soon we'll reach our early access milestone. By I just gotta say, like, just looking from this, I know the video's all grainy because it's like a video of a video. Like, I like the environment feel. Like, I can get down with this. Like, Postscriptum and Squad feel so alike, it's just, I'm so... I'm so tired of that art style right now, right? And this is just like, I can get down with this. I want this to be, I want this to be the game that, that, that I, I, I'm not disappointed by, you know what I mean? I want this to be the game that, that quenches my thirst. Cause like, I'm so tired of just being either burnt out from like games that have like early access and development cycles that take forever. And, and just the scale of certain games being too large. Um, but I don't know, this is like the same, scale as insurgency sandstorm and i like that i kind of like that it's a smaller scale because it allows that team to focus a lot more on on the detail and on, on the gameplay instead of having to fill the world and the game with assets right they can focus they need focus these games need focus to finish right so i think this is going to be one of my favorite shooters if it gets pushed to completion just because of the scale of things i can get behind it like it's not too ambitious, you know what I mean? It's it's just ambitious enough. It's not crazy. Sure, we've always struggled to fill. Our stretch goals have been carefully designed in such a way that allows us to speed up development of these features without damaging the core development schedule and to begin production on carefully selected additional elements for the game. We are asking for your generous support, something which we've never done before, to pay for launch servers, cover licensing costs, and polish the game ready for launch. If Vanguard is a game you would like to support, please follow us and join our community on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and our forums. You can also find us on our website at vanguardworldwar2.com. Thank you. Alright, so they're just plugging everything. But yeah. Okay, so I'll leave all the links so you guys can check stuff out for yourself, right? They just released their Kickstarter, right? They're already at 2,000 out of 13,000. This is a really low goal, right? Like, we've already seen Hell at Loose. They got funded and they're, they're doing their work and they're doing their stuff in the background. I really want a good smaller scale shooter, right? Because Postscript, them Squad, and Hell at Loose are all going to be competing with each other. Uh, this is probably going to be on the same scale as Insurgency Sandstorm. And I like the idea, I, I, I really do, of a, of a game that really requires teamwork and communication. Because Sandstorm, as much as I want it to be that kind of game, like very few people use their comms in Insurgency Sandstorm. Because um, it's not really needed. But this makes it sound like a, a smaller squad or a smaller postscriptum. A focused, more, more, more honed in uh, postscriptum, right? Because it's focusing on that small unit leadership and they're scaling down the game. Um... And that, that's, that's good. I, I think that's good because it's not competing directly with, like I said before, Squad, Postscriptum, and Hell Let Loose. Uh, this is like the smaller version of that, and I can totally get behind that. So if you want to check out all their information, I'll leave all the links in the comments down below. If you want to back this game, go ahead and back it. They have all their pledge stuff up here, so you get early access key and all that good stuff. Same same rough uh, kind of direction as Hell Let Loose's um, Kickstarter. And yeah, I mean, watch the trailer. It looks good. It I think it's gonna be fun if it gets completed. Uh, they're doing realistic weapons, realistic areas. It's it's good. It'll be good. Um, I hope. <laughs> I'm not gonna promise anything. They use a lot of buzzwords to get me hyped. Um, but yeah, I need to see more of this game for sure, and I'm sure a lot of you guys will as well. But I can't I can't complain. I mean, more tactical shooters. I mean, competition's always good for the consumer. So yeah, let's just let's let's just pour out the tactical shooters. Give me more tactical shooters. Yeah competition's so good for the consumer so i'm glad to see that the tactical shooter genre is growing this already looks like a, a solid game like it doesn't look like it's half-assed or anything like that so i can't wait to see this get developed and uh hopefully we can get it to, uh, to the point where you know we can play it because a small scale tactical shooter that requires teamwork and communication the only game that comes even close to mind is insurgency sandstorm but it's missing the communication uh element so this will fill a niche for me, in my opinion. A niche within a niche, but still a niche. Um, that made no sense. But hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this video. I know I rambled a bit. I haven't done a reaction video in a while. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you guys think it's a cool game. Um, someone posted this in my comments like yesterday. So I'm reading the comments and I was like, wow, what is this game? Um, so I read all the comments. But let me know what you think. 
And uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Look at that. It's up to 2,000 now. All right. Peace. I'm out.